Salaam alaikum and welcome back to Youth Matters where we are discussing the Grenfell Tower tragedy that took place on the 14th of June. Uh, as always, you know, we want to hear from you. If you know anyone who was affected, if you were there yourself, what did you see? What did you hear at ground level? You know, please get in touch. You've got the email on the screen. You've got the number as well. Um, Please, I'm still pleased to say that we have our same guests with us. Uh, Tahir, who's a university student, uh, Brother Abdul Malik, who works for a charity, an IA aid, and Brother um, Amjad, who is the managing director of Sakina Tours. So, thank you for staying with us. Uh, Brother Abdul Malik, coming back to you, before the break, obviously, we spoke about you know, what led to. Uh, the, the, the fire starting and so forth. Tell me, you know, we, we've heard so many, you know, horrifying, really sad, sad stories about innocent people who have passed away. There was one where obviously we heard about the mother who threw a child out the yeah. window, subhanAllah, and you're just, you know, just trying to visualize that. It's just so painful. Tell me, you know, what kind of stories, do you know anyone who, uh, who died, who was close to you or you knew them quite well? Well, I, I know a few actually, but one of the ones that I th I'm sure everyone knows about is uh, she's my sister's friend. So her relatives are the one she said, she, first thing she got a call and uh, they said, look, uh, the parents called and said, look, if you have done anything, forgive us. So and they were reciting before they were going. And the person who received the call, she, she couldn't just uh, fathom the fact that what's going on, what, why are you saying this? They're like, look, the building got on fire. So this was your friend's sister? My sister's friend. Si your sister's friend? Yeah. And so what she did was, she was inside the building? No, no, she, she, was, she was in the house. Basically, she got, received a call oh. from her family members. Ah, uh, who, subhanAllah, uh, who were trapped inside. Yeah, in the building. So the first thing, they, they said, look, if you've done anything, forgive us. And they were saying, she couldn't fathom the fact, what's going on? Like, yeah. All of a sudden, in the first thing in the morning, that's all the time, like the calling. So she's like, uh, look, the buildings go on fire. Because at this time, no one else knows that the buildings go on fire, of apart course. from the people over there. So, and uh, how many family members were trapped inside the house? I think... Uh, in the flat? Th three or four. SubhanAllah. Five, uh, five families. And one of the sisters, she was supposed to get married as well. Uh, full of month. So uh, she, she told us, she didn't even know until the morning that the, it was Grenfell Tower. I think that's when it hit everyone, when everyone woke up going back to work, like the family members. And this place is local, it's not far. Do they recall, you know, how long was that phone call? You know, do they recall, because we heard, we've heard so many stories where SubhanAllah like, people are talking to their loved ones yeah. and suddenly the land goes dead or all they hear is, you know, uh, someone who's just fallen down and, and, and you just kind of uh, start panicking. What kind of, what, what kind of, how, what was covered during that phone call? What kind of things she, were they she talking was just, about? They were reciting all the surahs, the Yasin and everything and because uh, obviously she couldn't understand the fact that what's happening because she always is just get a random call and say, look, if we've done anything, and they're just, uh, you know, reciting. So she's thinking, hold on, what's going on? Then she knew about the fire. So obviously when she woke up, that's when she uh, hit her, thinking that, okay, they were in the, still in the building. Because obviously the families, everyone was still told on the above floor not to come down. Because obviously they, that's what the fire brigade services thought they would be con able to contain the fire. Wow, subhanAllah. Um, Brother Amjad, we, you know, we've heard so many of these, you know, really, you know, heartbreaking stories. Which, which one kind of do you recall that connected with you most? That's, you know, yeah, I think just memory? about one of those that you actually mentioned, where um, one of the sisters were actually was on the phone, and as she was speaking, uh, the phone dropped, and then um, the person that would receive the call was, was saying that all she could hear was a fire crackling in the background. SubhanAllah. Um, I mean, just that, just knowing, it's, it's devastating. It would kill someone. Imagine you're hearing someone, um, one of your family members, pass away like this, and you can hear the fire crackling in the background of the phone, and you're screaming, you know, hello, 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 and there's no response, and you know, you know uh, that's that uh, it's happened. Um, mm. I can't, thank you. Um, to hear, you know, just hearing that, you know, knowing that your family member, your loved one, is going through what they are, and being almost helpless to actually help them. You know, which, what other stories? There were so many other ones. Which one do you remember that, that kind of serves that strongly it, it in your memory? It was that story that the brother just said. Um, I'm not, there might be a few variations of it, but there was one where a um, sister called up her family and was asked for forgiveness. And she was telling everyone, look, yeah, we're not going to make you out alive. Uh, sorry, apologizing, reading all the doors. I think that's really sad because knowing you're on the phone and you can't do nothing about it, I think that's one of the saddest things you can do. Mm, subhanallah. Um, 
Once again, you know, there's so many reports that, you know, there were conflicting reports as well uh, in terms of what was coming out of uh, the actual area. Um, Abdul Malik Bay, you know, we, after a few days, we, we heard reports and you alluded to this fact that people were saying don't bring any aid because there's just too much. Yeah. yeah, we're inundated with aid. But then, you know, only last week there were people who were victims affected by the whole kind of catastrophe who were saying that they have nothing. So I'm, I'm just trying to clarify okay. because there are people watching at home thinking, you know, I provided stuff and why is it that weeks later these people are now coming out and saying they didn't actually receive anything they need. You know, we know organisations who are giving zakat money, people yeah. are giving their zakat money, but surely if all that aid yeah. was going to them, so, so you know, w w what happened there? The thing is, that's not uh, entirely true what the people thinking because obviously we were on the ground. Mm. The thing is, there was, as I said, there was a phenomenal response of all the donations. The family members who were uh, victim, the victims, they, they were rehoused. They had uh, money from National Zakat Foundation, which were working closely with us. So they're the one who was handing them at the grants. Now, this was face value. Because obviously, they don't know if they were the actual victims. Because obviously, a few of them were in Westway Centre and Rugby Portobello. So they, they're not going to ask and say, you know, where's your ID? Because obviously, everything, uh, destroy, uh, everything's burned down. Mm. So they gave the money, if they, whatever clothes they want, they even gave the money for that and said, you know, buy it. There were so much donations, even just say, even there was 80 people alive, and the amount of donations they got, they can give it to the whole of Britain. So obviously, there's, there's, in, there's not much they can take. So, but they have been taking all the donations which they wanted, because if they needed any stuff, we can provide for them. They mm -hmm. know where it is. But mm -hmm. other than that, everything else is in warehouses. So a lot of charity uh, came aboard and they took a lot of stuff. Even then, they were still left. We gave to the homeless shelter, <laughs> Almana, every, even, even Salvation Army. Even still, there was a lot of donations left. Subhanallah. Subhanallah. That's really, you know, sad to hear. Um, once again, you know, please, we want to hear from you. I know there are people who are watching this. You either would have gone down yourself and got involved, you would have contributed, or you probably know someone who was affected by this. Please give us a call. You've got the number on the screen and, uh, you know, the email address. So if you don't want to speak, you can by all means uh, send us an email and tell us about your experiences. Afnara, uh, Obviously, how to manage it that affect us on the building zolia. So, after that, when Zanoin Khel Zar Khushto is in, I affect us on. Please, after that, Shori Koka, after that, Chalim Khuriyam Rakhoka, Kita Hunchon, Kita Dekhson. After that, when he no get manchur Shai Johnson, manchur Kita Hawatasla. After that, Zan Tanzayan. So, please, number us a screen and after that, email Khurta Farba. Um, coming back to uh, you, Tahe. You know, this, according to you know, according to the police. It seems, uh, you know, the figures are around 80 people who have died. Now, what do you say when local people, it's been reported, are saying, you know, there were hundreds of people in that building and they're confused as to why reports are claiming only 80 people have died. You know, how, what's your, what's your take on that? I think uh, the media have, be, have been clever with this. I mean, if they release the figures at over 100, over 150, there, be, there will be a national outcry they'll risk riots happening everywhere. So they've done, they've worked cleverly. So they've, they're going to slowly raise the numbers bit by bit until it reaches the total figure. But if they release it all in one go, there'll be riots everywhere. There'll be, people will fear for their safety. Mm. I think, Brother Abdul Malik, you know, with the social media nowadays, you know, you can't kind of, uh, there, there's no such thing as cover up to a certain yeah. extent, because obviously people are recording live footage of what's going on. Do you feel that, you know, many people are saying had this, had, had social media not been as prevalent as it is now, you know, do you think it would have been reported in the same way that we're learning about what happened? I, I believe the fact that with social media, there's good benefits though, as well as bad. But uh, since we did have it, we were, everyone was informed within a couple of minutes, whoever was in the ground or the people were recording when the fire started and other people knew and so was the fire service when they, 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 there is good in it. And obviously, uh, the bad thing I see is, is you know, when uh, well, I've seen a lot of videos when they say you know, people haven't received the donations and stuff. So they're uh, confusing people in where, mm. where there's uh, stress. Uh, it's like they're diverting the attention where you're supposed to be. Because there's victims, and obviously a few of them were in the hospitals. So th there's, there's much we can do with media uh, mm. in, in a good way and a bad way. But at this moment, uh, the main uh, spot should, spotlight should be on Grenfell Tower and the victims. Sure. Okay. Brother Amjad, you know, obviously the devastation was clear for everyone to see. Do you feel as though people, we spoke about people being angry. Do you feel as though people could see what was happening in front of them? And when the police, you know, uh, constable was coming on TV and saying, look, 12 people have died. And when they can clearly see that so many more, you know, the, you know, how, two thirds of the building had, had burnt down. And when they were quoting 12 people had died, do you think that added fuel to the fire of anger uh, without, and frustration? Without a doubt, without a doubt. Um, definitely, because a lot of the whole community 
is very uh, very tight and they know each other so when the people are missing from the mosque when their friends and relatives everyone knows people in this building and they because there's actually hundreds and hundreds of people in this uh, building probably about probably about um, close to a thousand Can I, I come back say. to uh, yes, Brother Amda. we've got a caller on the line okay uh, sure. thank you salam alaikum caller wa alaikum salam uh, how would you like to contribute to the discussion brother alhamdulillah um, i just want to just uh, share a few um what um, um, what I was basically my experience um, when it came on the news, I was reaching from you know from, from um, my friends, family, everyone was sharing the news, and I just wanted to just input like one of the things was um, the response. Uh, it was mentioned already, but I just wanted to say the response from the local authority, um, you know, the, um, the firefighters, and that. Alhamdulillah, they, their work they done amazing, but it could have been better um and of course uh, the council uh, they need to take responsibility one of the things is the people ain't taking responsibility for it um you know everyone's getting angry the public we don't know numbers um you know it's a, it's a 16 tower block and you know they, we, everyone knows there's about 600 people living there but only 50 have been revealed or only you know the identities everyone's sharing pictures what about the other 400 or 300 or 200 where are they gone you know why is it taking so long for them to release um you know people's um, um who else is missing or if they've obviously um died in the fire sure brother um, why so do you, that's one of the in, you, in, in your opinion why do you think it's been covered the way it has been why has there um, been a graduated approach in revealing how many people have died from 12 to now 80 over a span of weeks of course they they, they the, you know the more days that we've gone past the more more people they they you know finding out but what i'm trying to say is it, it you know <laughs> If you use just common sense, like, why is there, what happened to the other people? Why aren't you, I, I, that's the thing, I, I don't know um, what you're saying. Like, uh, people don't know. Um, they're left in the dark. You know, we need to hear what the local authority are saying, the, the, the police, the firefighters. Okay. Thank you for your call, brother. Um, and once again, you know, this is a show all about the youth and all about the community. So please, if you are involved or you know someone who is affected, get in touch. And just like that brother has, you know, tell us what were your views? Is what's being, uh, you know, presented in the media, in the mass media, you know, true to what you saw, what you've heard, you know, recollection of people's experiences? But <laughs> Uh, different. So please, if you have a number on the screen or email, please uh, involve us. Um, coming back to you, uh, Tahir, in terms of, you know, the, the caller spoke about, obviously, why this is happening, you know, he, why is it that there was such a delay? And I guess, you know, I'll ask you that same question as well. Why do you think people did not, you know, the response was not as quick and, you know, it just almost feels as though, you know, a lot of questions have been unanswered, you know, they have remained unanswered. And it were, especially when we're dealing with lives and the loss of lives of the kind of mammoth uh, numbers. Um, I think that because we're in London and we don't really get fires that, are, that often, there isn't really a strategy or a system put in place for, or procedures put in place for when one of these catastrophes happen. So now I think, uh, I think the, uh, the forces, uh, firefighters, they'll put together a strategy next time. And I think it will help yeah, prevent okay. it. And in terms of uh, Brother Abdul Malik, uh, you know, we're, we're, we're talking about how the numbers, uh, there was a graduated kind of uh, response in terms of how many people died over a period of time. You know, why did it, so many people are asking, why did it take a weeks for the government to actually implement a strategy to manage the situation? Why would it, you know, you'd think, and we've spoken about, and you've all mentioned, you know, in this day and age, you know, this should not be happening. Why would a disaster of that magnitude, why... You know, people. You know, people at home. They're watching this and they're w wondering why would it take a week? Because, say, for example, if there was a stabbing on the road or if there was an incident, we get the police managing that situation brilliantly. You know, and this is one of the kind of benefits, uh, one of the kind of strengths of this country that you have the uh, you know emergency services on, uh, or, you know, on that kind of situation immediately. Why is it that it's taken a week for uh, or weeks for the government to respond in the way they have? It's it's clearly you can see. Uh, Forget about well organized. They're not organized. They weren't prepared for it. They didn't expect that to happen. Cause the way it's supposed to be, they should uh, the risk assessment. When you do prevent something like, as they say, prevention is better than cure. So when you're making a building a structure, especially like that, and you've got one stairwell. But I, but I guess the question I'm asking is, you know, they weren't prepared. But when there's an emergency, it's the response. I guess the question of I'm course, asking yeah. is, why was there such a slow response? 
obviously there's as you know there's a reduction in uh, fire fire services and uh, engine by the tories mm. <laughs> they're, they're listening to the fire services so for them to get to places it's like there's not a lot of uh fire brigades everywhere the sentence so sure. obviously it's shortened so for them to come today they'll be it'll, it'll take more time for them to come okay thank you and uh brother abdul majid you know uh we had uh sorry uh brother amjad you know the, theresa may obviously the prime minister she was she uh, she was at the scene showing her support for those victims who were affected why was there such a negative response you were obviously there on ground level um theresa may i don't think she had a I honestly think it was a publicity stunt. Okay, she did not go and speak to the people, the victims. She actually spoke to the fire services, which she should do. But but she did not include the victims at all, and all the pictures and videos will show that as well. So that, but she that did go and speak to the firefighters and you know yes, she did. the people who obviously they're trying to. Uh, yes, she did, and she did say they've done a great job, which is true. They did mm. do a great job um, to do feel their that, capacity. Do you feel that she, you know, in hindsight, she should have gone and she should have spoken to the families? Yes, you know, that should be the first uh, first stop. Okay, because there's people they actually lo lost uh, their, their children, their loved ones, their mothers, their fathers, and th there's so many more people that are unaccounted for. Right? And there is, uh, just going back to your last question, is there is actually a big cover up here because this is in this something like this happening in the UK right? is the whole world was watching. Okay, and it's very shameful, right? extremely shameful, and the reasons behind it, and there were so many people involved in this. Okay, from the firefighters, and then there's uh, the uh, the wealth, um, the the, the wealth that's go, uh, that's been poured into that area as well. All of this actually actually points to um, the government. And um, yes, uh, like Abdul Malik said, they were not prepared for this. All right, they did not expect anything like this. And believe me, if something like this happened in the 80s. I think it would have been much, much better handled because they have got experience and they were prepared for things like this. Oh, okay. Uh, Tahir, you know, uh, you, did you vote during the elections? Yes, I did. Yeah? And did you vote with Theresa May? No, I didn't. Okay. So, <laughs> you seeing, you know, the results, um, how, you know, what, from a youth perspective, what was your feeling when you saw that the leadership of this country, you know, do you feel that enough was done by the leadership? Uh, of the country. Personally, I think um, when the incident did happen, Theresa May did go there and she didn't talk to the victims at first on her first visit because she feared for her safety. And I think as a Prime Minister, if you're going to fear for your own safety when talking to the victims, I think that just shows what type of person you are. So do, you, do you think it would have helped the situation? You know, a lot of people were angry. Mm -hmm. Do you feel if the leader of the country came and said to the people, look, I can empath you know, I, I can relate to your suffering, I know you're going through this. If she showed that emotional kind of involvement in their situation, yes, do you think it would have uh, lowered the anger amongst yes, people? Yes, definitely. I think she needed to re reassure people, but her first visit was a disaster there. So I think when they saw her be scared or get scared of the people, because she was saying she fears for her own safety when she went mm. there then because of that she went back again to talk to the people sure so and uh, brother abdul malik you know if in saying that you know sadiq khan the mayor of Ta uh, you know the mayor of london he was there and you know there were reports and there was footages where he was uh, you know there was a lot of negative kind of reaction to him as well um and do you, you know once again i guess the question that i'm trying to ask is it's that anger yeah. do you feel that it was towards him as a person, or do you feel it was the lack of action uh, and the urgency from the authorities? It, it, it was definitely for the lack of actions. They don't mean it in, in pro uh, properly. Either it's the fact that even uh, he was there. Obviously, he w people were angry. They were shouting at him whatsoever. He didn't say much, but obviously, they, the point of the people in the community is, if you're taking the leadership role, even to Theresa May, yeah. you should have these things organised, especially in the richest borough. We, sh we shouldn't have things like this. You should have been organised from day one. We don't wait for things to happen, then we settle it. We do things first as it, to prevent it. As I, I've said, mentioned so many times, we, we need to put an uh, action in pl plan thinking before that happens, what can we do to resolve the situation? Not let the problem happen first and then we resolve it. Mm. So obviously for them to be, take a real leadership role, they've taken it, they, they've been voted whatsoever. Do it. Many, Show it. Many people were surprised that the army were not deployed immediately. What's your What's your take on that? <laughs> there's, there's nothing much I can say. If If, if personally, uh, if it was Tower Bridge, you'll see everyone on them there. So you, do you feel as though you know the the kind of uh, location had an impact in terms of the location? There was a connection between the location, and the reaction. Uh, definitely, because that place. But should that, that matter? 
no, but the, that's the case. For me, that shouldn't matter regardless of what place it is. They, they should have been deployed from day one because the, um, the amount of response there was from people, everything, they needed someone to take the leadership role from an official and hand it, uh, handle it well. But they weren't there. No, there wasn't even enough police. for. I don't even know council members there. SubhanAllah. Okay, we're going to go for a short break. But once again, you know, after the break, we want to hear from you. Um, you know, could, for example, those who, you know, the, tra the tragedy that unfolded, the kind of trauma that people went through, if we're hearing that people were not supported, then, you know, how did that help support the situation and how did that help improve it? We will carry on with that, but please, after the break, we'd like to hear from you. So please get involved. You've got the number on the screen and email address. And, you know, we will see you after the break.